Hey everyone, this is Bad But Sweaty. I am a 2,480 hour veteran of Vigor. Over those many hours, I have picked up a ton of tips and strategies and I will be sharing some of them with you in this video. I tried to make these tips different from the ones you would see in other videos, like practicing in the firing range or using a specific weapon. There will be none of that. Lastly, the tips are in no particular order of importance. I only numbered them so that it would be easier to jump between tips when rewatching the video or if you want to skip one of them. Without any further delay, let's get started. <laughs> Starting off with tip number one, always assume that you're being watched. Unless you're absolutely certain that no one is in the area or that you're the last player in the lobby, channel your inner Rockwell and always assume somebody's watching you. Whether you're running in the open or looting the barred house, standing still could end your life at any moment if a sneaky player decides to take the shot that they have on you. This is especially important in lobbies with a lot of snipers, or on maps with a lot of open space, such as Anakin, as players can spot you from miles away and end your life with a well-placed shot without you even knowing that they are there. Tip number two, using the element of surprise. The element of surprise is extremely useful when dealing with players that are more skilled than you are. After all, if they don't even know you're there, how can they kill you? If you see or hear a player heading in your direction, quickly find something to duck behind and wait until you see the whites of their eyes to burst out and empty your magazine into them. This also works if someone uses a portable signal detector on you. Just move around 15 to 20 meters away and repeat the previous process. Tip number three don't lay prone for extended periods of time. Lying prone long enough to say, wow, this is some nice scenery. <gasps> I see a player. I'm going to shoot. Is far too long if your goal isn't to be sent back to your shelter as quickly as possible. It is almost always better to aim down your sights and take a few accurate shots or push towards your target than to lie completely still allowing players to take shots that even your granny could hit. If you still insist on lying prone, here's a phone number that I think you should call. Tip number four, don't peek the same spot multiple times. When engaging another player from behind cover, it may become tempting to re-peek from the same angle multiple times. After all, you almost had him the last time you peeked. However, this is almost always a terrible idea. Just like you, your opponents learn as the engagement continues. They may see your pattern of peeking and wait for you to make the fatal mistake of repeating the same action too many times over. Ideally, you should be peeking from as many different angles as possible, as randomly as possible. This will make you extremely hard to predict and will greatly increase your odds of winning that fight. Tip number five, using visual cover. Visual cover refers to anything that blocks you from a player's sight, but won't stop bullets, such as bushes and other foliage. While it's less effective than solid cover because it can't stop bullets, it's still an incredibly useful tool when used correctly. An example of this would be running into or behind a large bush when an enemy player spots you to ensure that they can't land consecutive shots. Another great use of visual cover would be popping in and out of a bush to take shots at your target. This allows you to take the other player out while remaining relatively safe as every time you walk back into the bush, you break line of sight and the other player will likely lose you. This isn't foolproof, of course. Anyone can still land a random headshot on you or land enough shots from their spray to kill you. In short, while not being amazing by any means, visual cover is certainly better than nothing. Tip number six, positioning is everything. 
Putting yourself in an advantageous position over your opponent is one of the most important things you can learn about combat and vigor. Being able to foresee bad situations before they develop is invaluable in a game like Vigor, where one bad decision can send you back to the shelter empty-handed. Recognizing that you are about to be pinched between two players, and then moving to a location where you can third-party them instead is a prime example of this. Had you not moved, odds are, because you were the player in the middle, you would be the one the other two try to take out first. Obviously, even with poor positioning, you can still win fights, but you are making things multiples more difficult on yourself for no additional gain. Positioning can even be used to supplement the downsides of the weapon class you're using. For example, if you have a sniper on a map like Sawmill, you can put yourself in a position where it's hard for your opponent to get close to you without eating shots like your mom's home cooking or your mom on a Friday night. Tip number seven, crosshair placement is key. If you're the aggressor in a fight, whether you know where an enemy is or not, you should always be aiming at the place where you suspect them to be. The reason for this is, if the player is hiding there and decides to peek you as you push them, you save valuable milliseconds by being prepared to fire immediately rather than having to figure out where the shooter is and only then returning fire. By that point, you may already be dead. If you are not certain that somebody is in the area, aiming at common hiding spots can also have the same effect. Another way this can help you is when you're trying to reposition or push forward. Taking a few shots towards the area that your opponent is hiding may make them think twice about peeking you while you're moving. Tip number eight look for other avenues of attack. When you get into a standoff with another player, where you're both just waiting for the other to make a move, don't just rush up towards them and hope you get the kill. Look for other areas that you could rotate towards to put the other player in a bad position. This could include seizing the high ground, forcing them into an area where they can get third partied, finding a new angle to shoot at them from, or disengaging and luring them into a different area to start the fight again. Tip number nine, keep your firing mode at full auto. Have you ever run into a fight thinking that your weapon is on full auto when it's actually on single shot because you forgot to change the firing mode from your last fight? Or maybe you picked up a weapon and didn't check the firing mode only to realize your mistake when it was already too late. Well, I certainly have. This is something that used to get me killed regularly when I first started out, but even now still gets me occasionally. You should always have your weapon on full auto instead of single shot, so you can react quickly when another player surprises you or when you need to lay down a lot of fire as soon as possible. Single shot also has far more recoil than full auto when you tap fire on most weapons. Tap firing is just the act of tapping your trigger quickly instead of holding it for every shot. There is no reason to ever switch to single shot on any weapon because it's either the same or worse than full auto no matter how you slice it. Allow me to reiterate, SVU full auto, Suomi full auto, Baby Cannon full auto, AKM full auto. And finally, tip number 10. Think like your opponent. This is by far the hardest to learn of all the tips I've shared in this video. To think like your opponent, you need to put yourself in their shoes. What would you do if you were in their situation? Would you flank to the right? If so, shift your focus to that area to make it as hard as possible to execute that flank. Would you throw a grenade? If so, be ready to push to a different piece of cover or to push the other player as they're in the throwing animation. Have you noticed that they're getting a little too attached to that pebble next to them? Then flanking is probably your best bet there. Or have you seen this specific player before and recognized the tactics they're using? Well, then you should keep the way they killed you last time in the back of your mind and be ready for it. Being prepared for such an attack shortens your reaction time because you're expecting it to come, 
saving valuable milliseconds. And, as we previously discussed, milliseconds matter. The time to kill, or TTK, in Vigor is incredibly short, often being around a fraction of a second. Yes, you can die in-game just a tad slower than the blink of an eye. Getting into your opponent's head goes both ways, however. You should be mindful of how you killed a specific player last as well, or the way you pushed up to them. If you do the same thing too many times over, you become predictable, and thus, an easy target. For the final part of this video, I am going to show you a couple clips of mine. In these clips, I make a couple of mistakes and I want you to, using the information provided in this video, comment what I did wrong and what I could have done instead. I hope you found this video helpful. I wanted to make it because I haven't seen enough combat-oriented tip videos, and most of the general tip videos I've seen are from some inadequate sources, and are either heavily outdated or from a guy whose only goal is to grab the airdrop every game. So I thought I'd throw my hat in the ring and make a tips video. Anyway, this has been Bad But Sweaty from the Christopher Beast channel. Have a nice day.